right, beautiful people. Thank you for joining us for another amazing and impactful episode of the True Health Forever podcast, where we try to live our best life through the lens of holistic health. I'm your host, Devon Travell, creator of Black Wall Street, the board game. And as usual, I have with me the earring wearing, the lip popping. I don't know if that's Vaseline or cocoa butter, but it's popping. The (laughs) curls Hop in the smiling queen herself. Please introduce yourself. What's up, party people? My name is Sinclair, aka D. Health Nerd. And uh, we are bringing you this podcast on this Sunday afternoon. It's actually pretty nice weather today. It's nice and it sunny. Um, I know you kind of have a long day. Indeed. I feel like usually it's. Either we both have long days or one of us has a really long day. I'm Somebody actually, is always busy. I actually have a pretty chill day and I'm excited about it. You just gonna rub that in, huh? That's what you gotta do. Sorry about that. It's cool. It's cool. <laughs> um, but how was your week, Queen? Let, let's talk about your your week, your vibes, uh, any any notable things that you would like to share with the folks. Mm-hmm. It's a cute thinking face. Who was my week? Like, but like when you ask, like, what'd you have for lunch yesterday? It's like, uh, <laughs> uh, how was my week? I think my week was pretty good. I think it was just a kind of like a chill week. I think mm-hmm. that's why nothing really memorable was popping out to me gotcha. too much. Um, but that's good. Good or bad, nothing like super memorable is t- popping up. So I think it was a pretty chill week, which is good. Nice. Um, I'm like officially, what's the date? A month out from I have no idea graduation. What, what date it is. It's the 15th or 14th? Uh, one of those, yeah. which means I graduate in like a month. <laughs> which means we graduate in a month. <laughs> so it's oh, yeah. exciting. I'm doing the final countdown, working on the final assi- assignments, which is exciting. So mm-hmm. I'm just ready to be done. Congrats, Queen. How was your week, Uh My week was a little bit of a stressful week because, again, this is a had another big event on Friday. The power went out Friday mornings. So we woke up, no power, had to leave the uh, the spot to go back to work to get better Wi-Fi. Um, and then Friday night was one of my friend's birthday. So he had like a little birthday event. You know, we were, we were out there popping. We'll, we'll get into that a little bit later. But um, <laughs> yeah, that was that was a fun, fun event but yeah overall I think the week was a little little bit on the stressful side yeah. next week should be more chill I don't think there's any work events so I'll have ah, some time to breathe heal get back to my normal uh kind of daily grind like last week my my daily routines were a little bit messed up a little mm-hmm. bit so hopefully next week not hopefully next week get back to my daily grind um but wanted to talk a little bit about the event that we went to. Uh, first of all, signs of getting old. <laughs> <laughs> right? Bruh. Signs of getting old. When uh, when it's like 9 o'clock, 9.30, and you're already yawning. It's, I, it's, it's, 9.30 and starting uh, yawning? It was, it was early. My first yawn happened at 4.49 p.m. Oh, wow. 4 49 p.m i yawned i was like oh lord here oh, we wow. go it's a long night <laughs> um but shout out to isaac congratulations on another amazing year on this planet legend in the making for sure um so he had a cool little uh event where he was performing live he had artists come out do their spoken word freestyle rap singing it was definitely a nice little vibe but um if you put on the flyer what are the rules? Well, yeah, let's do a little, what, what are the rules? Uh, if you put on the flyer that your event starts at 9.15, at what time does your event actually need to start? Right? I understand it's going to be late. I understand that. But if it says 9.15, at what point does the event actually begin? Sinclair, what, what are your thoughts? What, what are the rules? What, what's the, the buffer of time? So I've told you, first of all, let's preface this conversation. Anybody who knows Devon knows that he is the world's most punctual person, which means it doesn't matter what the event is, whatever time you advertise, he he slash we, I'm now roped into this, he slash we will be there five minutes before that time. Yes. Okay. So if your fire is 915, best believe, unless I intervene, 
we're rolling up at 9:10. Now, to a normal person, you know, whatever time you want people to to show up, you start it. The start time is usually like at least an hour before. Right, so if you have a function and you want people to show up at five, mm -hmm. you put four on the flyer. Like everybody kind of knows that. Not, not my friend here. So my rule of thumb is like the absolute earliest you should ever show up. Now, I mean, like a wedding is different. Like a wedding show is up. it though? Because the same thing happened for a wedding. True. <laughs> for the most part, look for our wedding, it was true. We started that. Yeah, no, we be here at this time, or the boat is leaving, leaving. you on shore all right um <laughs> but yeah i think weddings like be on time otherwise you might miss the ceremony or walk it in the middle of the ceremony mm -hmm. um but for like parties baby showers anything like that it's generally like i always say the absolute earliest you should show up is 30 minutes past the start time like the earliest you still gonna be one of the first people there which is precisely what happened to us <laughs> <laughs> every time we stopped to get food we got there it was 9 40 it was it was it was like 10 o'clock yeah almost 10 o'clock before we went <laughs> and, and it was we were still yeah. long story short the event didn't start until like 11. music wasn't like played played until like 11 and we're old she was yawning at 4 p.m i was yawning at 9 so by the time 11 came you know we wanted to stay to hear the music get the vibe so we ended up staying until like 1 no 12 30 something, like something late but y'all hurt i'm still healing mentally right. and emotionally today off of the sleep that i was losing uh, very much so you know? <laughs> yesterday i was hurt hurt today i'm like eh, you know i'm not completely myself yet uh, long story short signs of aging just wanted to bring that to you in case you're dealing with some of these early signs as well fight back I don't know how you fight back. If you got tips for us, how we can fight back. Cause we want to still be young. We want to still be able to, you know, be with our socialized friends and have a good time. But uh, yeah, anyway. Well, the only way we survived was because of the rock star that we drank, but right. I'm, you know, not a super big advocate for drinking energy drinks on a regular basis, mm -hmm. on a need based basis. But you know, any other more natural tricks you got to stay up when you need to stay up, please throw them our way. Please do, please do. And I'm saying, so as y'all know, we're trying a new uh, setup. We're about to get into the actual podcast episode. And I see when I look straight for longer, it focuses better. Hmm. As soon as I turn to the side, it focuses on something else, which is an interesting thing. Because today we're going to be talking about key performance mm -hmm. indicators. Yep. That was the smoothest accidental <laughs> transition <laughs> I've ever done. I was like, where is he going with this? It was the smoothest, but completely accidental transition. So today we're talking about KPIs, key performance indicators. The queen will break that down later on, but it's really high level things that you can do in your life and your business to make sure you are on track. Without further ado, let's get into the episode. <laughs> Again, I'm going to keep looking straight just so I can remain visible while <laughs> here. I know you're all right. <laughs> I'm still um, here. I'm here. Um, so KPIs, you know, you are rounding your, your last month in your MBA program. So can you talk a little bit about what KPIs, how they're used in business, and then how maybe we can translate those to personal? Break it down for us, Queen. What are they? KPI stands for K. Wow, K. <laughs> good job yes ma'am they do <laughs> kpi stands for a key uh -huh. performance indicators there we go kpi uh -huh. um, signs of aging y'all yeah, um and they can be uh, literally applied to anything um but as he mentioned it it's it's in general how are you measuring your success how do you know if you are winning or you are losing? Mm. Um, that, like that's that's how I like to, you know, I deal with this a lot at work. That's the easiest way that I like to describe it. How do you know if you are winning or losing? Um, is it based off like, if it's just based off your emotions, then you in for a wild ride. <laughs> <laughs> up and down, up and down. Right. So you should have key performance indicators that show 
right? If this, whether it's a, uh, usually something you can measure, right? Um, Not usually, I think people, they should always they should be, always be yeah, something yes. always they should always be something you something you can measure and and we'll talk about later on how you can turn something that's not really able to be easily measured into something that can be measured um but how do you know if you're winning or losing so in business right mm -hmm. um it can be you can have a profit goal it can be a customer customers you know whatever obviously depending on the business will uh, determine what your kpis are sure. um but basically it is what numbers what metrics are you looking at <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I'll try to stop distracting you <laughs> What numbers or metrics are you looking at to determine whether you are successful or not successful? Um, and by not successful, it could just mean you're you're in a stage where you need to reevaluate and figure out how you need to get back on track. Um, but yeah, that's in a nutshell, right? And you also have, can have personal key performance indicators. It could be like your bank account, right? What is your bank account at? That is something mm -hmm. very easily measurable. If you say, I mm -hmm. always want to have at least this amount of money in my bank account, that's something that measure that's measurable. You right. could look at your phone at any point and say, I'm winning or I'm losing. Right. Um, so you want to make it as easy as possible to say like thumbs up, thumbs down. We use charts a lot at, at my job, you know, whether it's a green, you get green or red or sometimes yellow. Um, and usually the, you know, the thumbs up obviously means you are succeeding. Thumbs down means you're not quite where you need to be. A little bit of work. <laughs> and the yellow can sometimes mean you're better than you were last time this year. Nice. but not quite where you want to be. Nice. Yeah. Um, so the why we are covering KPIs, okay? So the why for KPIs is in business, you obviously need to make sure you are constantly checking your progress to making sure that you are making progress forward. Same thing with your personal life. Uh, the steps you're using per day, your personal bank account, calories or meals, how many thank yous you give to people, how many hugs you give to people, whatever it is, you want to make sure, wait. yeah, wait if you want to do that. Like there are key things that you can be measuring to see your own personal health and success as a person. Um, so we're not going to, you know, force all of y'all to like be like really nitpicky and analytical for your business or for not for, for your business, you should be doing that, but for your personal, because, you know, you want to be able to live life freely without necessarily measuring a whole bunch of stuff. But we do want you to think of what are maybe one or two things that you can measure that right now you are trying to get better at doing. Okay. So KPIs, they're used very much so for business, like the queen says, but we're going to try to talk about how you can use them both for business and for improving your own personal life as well today. Queen, anything else you want to talk about before we go off into how you can figure out what your KPIs can be? Um, just piggybacking off of what you said in terms of like when you're <laughs> talking about your personal life, right? In business, you usually will have a list of KPIs, right? Mm -hmm. You may have your financial one, your operational one, your quality one, your safety one, whatever. Um, but in your personal life, um, like you said, do do what you want. But our suggestion is maybe start with one or two, right? And then you right. can build off of that. Um, but like you said, you still kind of want to, you know, want to enjoy your life. You don't want to become a person that's like, oh, I can't do that. It's going to, you know, you don't, <laughs> you don't want to become a robot, but right. um, you definitely if you give yourself one or two things that generally guide, right? What are, what are just one or two things you want to work on? It's best probably to start with one, right? What's just one thing I want to work on and how am I going to measure if I'm actually improving on that one thing? Mm. There it is. All right. So next section, let's talk about the how. Um, and I don't, I know you have like a set system that you kind of want to walk through a little bit, but, um, like just set questions that people can be asking themselves to figure them out or, um, specific goals that they have, and they can break down that goal into little micro goals. Talk to us, queen. How can folks really determine their KPIs for their personal health? Yeah. So I think step number one for whatever you're applying this to. Um, but if we're talking about personal life, step number one is to determine what your goal is. Where, where are you trying to go? Um, so, right, when if you're trying to be healthy, healthy is a very broad term. And if you ask different people, it's gonna mean different things to different people. Mm -hmm. So if you're trying to be healthy, then what does that look like to you? What does that mean to you? Does that mean you're, you've reached your ideal weight? Does that mean you've reached some measurements? Does that mean you had more energy? Does that mean that um, you're just more mobile, you're able to, to, to you know, do more things without, does it mean you're pain-free? Uh, you know, does it mean whatever aches and pains that you've been going through are now, you know, a thing of the past? 
Um, does it mean that you are, you know, eating a certain way, eating a certain diet, whatever it is, um, decide what that, what that goal is for you. Um, whether it's, you know, maybe another one is involving your finances. Maybe you're trying to invest a certain amount of money. Maybe you're trying to, uh, save a certain amount of money so you can invest it. Maybe you're trying to save money so you can, uh, buy a house, um, start a business, whatever it is. Um, what are some other examples? of personal finance KPIs? No, just uh, personal goals, maybe that people might be able to reach. Um, or it could be, be networking. Mm -hmm. Like maybe you want to meet more people. So it's like, okay, every month I want to befriend five new random people on LinkedIn, on Instagram, on Facebook, or in real life, which may be hard right now, but you know, you just want to meet new people. Um, find a mentor. Yeah, I want to find uh, one or two mentors for different goals. Maybe it's I want to, I remember you, you used to have this one. Mm -hmm. I want to call at least one family mm -hmm. member or friend every week and actually talk to somebody. Like, um, like, like she said, like you can pick what your goal is and then you kind of reverse engineer that. So again, if your goal is I want to feel more connected because right now during COVID-19, maybe you're living by yourself and you feel kind of disconnected a little bit and that's impacting your emotions, impacting your mental. All right, well, a KPI is how can I meet new people every week, every day, every month? How can I talk to, video chat with on the phone, IG live, whatever it is with people that I know and love so that way I still feel connected. So again, it doesn't have to be like real business focused. It doesn't have to be real like I'm I'm uh doing all these things. Like it can be like one small intentional thing that you just need in your life right now. It can be I'm trying to improve my marriage. It can be mm. I'm trying to improve the relationship with my kids. Just mm. figure out like what is the future you look like and how is that different from where you are right now, right? So if I want to I want to be able to go out and run a mile. Right. All right. Then that, that there the few things that go into that, right. You need to have the physical capability to do that. You need to have the energy and the desire to do that. Um, so those are some things that, you know, just to think about what is the future you that you are trying to get to. It can be uh, a couple months down the road. It can be a couple years down the road. Um, but what does that look like? and actually like write that down. Like, I wanna have more energy. I want to have a better relationship with my kids. I wanna have a better relationship with my husband. I wanna improve the relationship with my mom, whatever it is, mm -hmm. um, write it down. And that's step number one. Yep. And, oh, you got more steps? No. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got more steps. Oh, go ahead. Um, so then after that is determining, right, is reverse engineering that. What do you need to do to make that happen? Mm -hmm. So if you are, trying to improve the relationship with your, your significant other. Um, what does that look like? Step number one, two, how do you get there? So it's like, I want us to be able to just talk more. You know, I want us to be able to have more random conversations. I want us to be more like friends. Um, then that's probably, you know, talking on a regular basis. Like, okay, I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm, take, take a note. She wants to talk, talk more. Oh Lord. We talk mm -mm. literally you, all the time. You said you want to talk. This is an example. Oh, God, I was messing with you. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> uh, so determine whatever, again, what the goal is and how you're going to get there. So if it is to improve the relationship with somebody, obviously you're going to need to communicate with that person and talk to that person to get to that goal. So maybe set some frequency. We're going to do this, whatever it is, once a week or once a day. Um, you know, maybe it's every day after dinner, we're gonna, we're gonna sit down and we're gonna talk about how our day was. Mm -hmm. um, if it's a, a, a health goal, then it's, you know, if you're trying to lose inches or lose weight, obviously you need to be exercising um, and eating well. So again, those are, those are ways to reverse engineer and say like, okay, if that's my goal, then I need to make sure that I'm exercising three times a week, um, you know, for at least 30 minutes or I need to um, make sure that I'm uh, eating this certain diet or whatever it is, um, avoiding these types of foods this, these many days out of the week, trying to eat this type of diet, having this many smoothies out of the day, doing a juice cleanse once a month, or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, but the first step one, determine the goal, where you wanna go. Step two, what are steps you need to take to get there? Beautiful. Is there a step three? Yeah. Oh. Um, step three is determine how you're going to measure those steps. Um, so again, if it's, and some things are harder to measure, um, 
But so like, right, if you if you say, I want more energy, I just want to have more energy. I've been so tired lately. Doesn't matter how much coffee I drink. Right. I'm just drained. I'm beat. How These can are I... signs that you may be getting old. <laughs> right. We are right there with you. <laughs> how can I just get more energy? That is something that is hard for you to measure, right? That I, it's more based on how you feel. So my question to you would be then, what are some things you do when you have more energy? Mm-hmm. So I, when I have more energy, I tend to go out and I take more walks. Um, I tend to hang out with my friends more. I tend to play with my kids more. I tend to be more talkative, whatever. Um, determine like, what are three things? <laughs> Determine what are three things that you do when you have more energy? And those are things that you can measure, right? So how many, if again, if it's, I tend to take more walks, then start measuring how many walks you take a week. Mm -hmm. Um, Not only is that going to have to give you something you can measure, it is probably also going to motivate you to take more walks, Mm -hmm. which should also get you- All you need is your little Fitbit, all phones at right. this point have apps that can automatically count. So it's not stuff you have to you have to spend extra money on. But if you want to measure walks or mm-hmm. steps, there's already tools that can measure that for you. Right. Um, so yeah, you know, I, I play with my kids more. So you know, like, how many times we, this week did I play with my kids? Mm-hmm. Um, so those are easy ways, right? If you had a a week where you only played with your kids once, and then you have the next week where you play with your kids every single day then that's probably a good indicator of like, all right, this was a day that, this was a week that you'd probably get a thumbs down. And this week where you play with your kids every single day, that's a good week. That's what I want my life to look like every Mm -hmm. week. And this isn't on schedule, but it would be interesting to see how different your kids' energy is as well. Right. So if you're able to do some things and you're now keeping track and you're working out more, you're eating more to have more energy and how you measure your energy is how many times you play with your kids. It'd be interesting to see like over months, weeks, mm-hmm. years, like is your now relationship with your kids stronger because you're you right. know working with them more? Are you able to build their create creativity a little bit more? Do you know what's happening in their life more because you're playing with them and through playing, they're communicating their needs, their wants, and what whatever else is happening. So that would be a very random, but very interesting connection to see. Yep. Mm-hmm. Probably will there probably there are probably other benefits that will come from yeah. whatever steps you're taking. Facts. Yeah. Okay, anything else for the personal before we translate? And a lot of that stuff is going to be very much the same for business, but any other steps? Oh, that pretty much covers it. So just to recap, right? You, mm-hmm. you start with what is your goal? What is the future you, the better you look like, the better version of you? What does it look like? What are, you know, we'll dry down a couple physical like things that are that are different about you. You have more energy, you, you're 20 pounds lighter, whatever it is, write down what that is. Reverse engineer. What are some steps you need to take to get there? And then how can you make those measurable? And again, if you're like, how can I measure this? It's not something, it's based off a of feeling. Then ask yourself, what, do, what are some things you do when you feel that, whatever it is, more energy, when you feel sexier? What, is, what are some things you do, okay? Um, <laughs> that okay. is measurable. Well, we're not gonna run through that list, huh? <laughs> <laughs> this is a family-friendly podcast. Exactly. So you're, you're right, smart move. <laughs> Um, so next week on true hope Forever, <laughs> adult version we'll be covering um okay so shifting over a little bit to the business side and again it's gonna be very similar steps but slightly easier because i feel like what you're doing in your business should definitely be measurable mm-hmm. um so i'm going to start off with just like revenue or sales if for your business you want to make $100,000 for the year, right? So this is what your business wants to make. And you can obviously go that down. You can go down like, oh, maybe I just want to make $10,000 this year. Maybe you're you're just starting off. Break that down into, okay, that means per month, I need to be making 900 and something dollars per month. Each item that I'm selling costs $20 per customer. So how many items you need to sell per month, okay? So same situation. Step one is, what is the goal? The goal is $100,000 in sales, $10,000 in sales, $1,000 in sales, whatever it is. Set that goal, write it down, put it on your your wall. That's what we do. Mm -hmm. uh, Or put it on something that you can see it on a constant basis. This is the long-term goal. Step two, just like the queen said, what are the small steps that I need to do to get to this goal? 
So year is 100,000, so that means per month it's, and I didn't do the math on this, but it's X dollars per month is what I need to make. Each item that I'm selling is this much, so I need to be selling these items. How can I sell these items, right? Step three, the measurements. I'm going to send 10 emails per month. I'm going to post every single day on Instagram. I'm gonna do a podcast episode where I invite other guests on here to make sure that we're spreading the brand more and they post it on there, whatever the actual measurable steps and actions are, write those down. And then step four is the, I was like, what was that? <laughs> is the constantly going back and kind of reporting, mm-hmm. right? Okay, this month I did $6 in sales. Hmm, that's a little bit below. What happened? Oh, well, I actually forgot to send emails. Mm-hmm. Okay, next month I did $2,000 in sales. Oh, what did we do this time? Well, actually I posted every single day and these other accounts that we weren't thinking about actually reposted us so we got even more stuff. Oh, okay, so now you can pivot. Like, oh, okay, reposting is a strategy. So how can I get more reposts? So for business, again, it's, it's pretty straightforward, but I don't think people, like I didn't learn about KPI and so I started working at my first job mm-hmm. and I just had a really, a, a pretty good boss who was like giving me some of the inside stuff and he was on the associate level I was beginning, but he was like, Devon, I have KPIs. Mm -hmm. This is what I need to do. How can you help me with these KPIs? And I was like, KPIs, what are these? Uh, But now that we have our own businesses, we can now set KPIs for potluck where every week the queen has this long chart and it's like, these are what we're doing for potluck. We have our KPIs for a Black Wall Street to board game where it's like, all right, for the year, this is how many games we want to sell. This is how much swag we want to sell. This is how many workshops we want to do. So definitely encourage everyone out here with a business sales and revenue 100% should be one of your KPIs because you are in business and you need revenue to stay in business. I would recommend social media or email, some type of outward communication be another KPI for you. How many emails, how many newsletters, how many posts, how many followers are you getting on a monthly basis so you can see how that's growing. And then number three, hey, pick a third one whatever, you know, maybe you're in a specific niche where there's another very measurable thing that you should be measuring for success. So I'll leave that up to you. But you know, what's, what's a third thing that you can measure? Maybe it's, oh, go ahead. Oh no, go ahead, queen. I was gonna say, maybe it's quality related. Um, so like, if you have a physical product, um, you know, if you, like, if you're doing some type of food or beverage, and you know, I work in beverage industry so it's like consumer complaints is always one that we're, we're looking at um so if you have some type of reviews right mm-hmm. if you're selling on amazon or whatever you want to maintain a certain uh rating of of reviews that's one way um you know returns if you have some product that people can return how many returns are you getting back because if you're selling two thousand dollars worth but half of those are coming back then obviously you have a problem you need to address right. so maybe that third one you know what for whatever industry you're in um if it's a service then you know it's probably going to be more based on like the reviews that people are leaving an evaluation maybe you send them afterwards um but yeah i would say maybe that third one maybe it's based on some type of quality rating yeah and the, the last thing that I'll kind of talk about for, for KPIs is we talk a lot. One, we, we talk. <laughs> in general. Yeah, in general, <laughs> we, we, we talk a lot. Um, just so y'all know. <laughs> oh, but the second thing is we talk a lot about manifestation, about vision, about visualization, meditation, all that stuff. And I know sometimes for folks, it seems like very abstract abstract and not not tangible like oh they're talking about manifesting all that stuff kpis is one almost the exact same thing as manifestation Mm -hmm. step one what's the goal this is literally manifestation yeah this is literally creating the vision but i think kpis for a lot of people makes it more tactile and makes it more real so again we've talked a lot about manifestation we are huge believers and practicers of manifesting your dreams and what you want Um, And we're just trying to give you one additional way to not only manifest, but also after that, how can you take these performances, take these measurable things, and then ultimately manifest this long term vision that you have for yourself. So please, you know, take take some notes, really uh, take the time to make a personal KPI, a health KPI, make at least one, if not three business KPIs for you to take advantage of. That way you can really start to see it's a little bit more 
progress in whatever it is that you're trying to get. Oh. Now, transitioning into maybe the final segment is we're going to do a, a semi-live, because I think we, we kind of already have KPIs mm -hmm. made, um, but a semi-live of what our personal health and business KPIs are. Um, Queen, would you like to start us off? Or would you like me to start us off? Um, I can start us off. I'm actually ready. Oh, oh, know, come on. This is a historical moment <laughs> on the True Over Ever podcast. Tell your friend, tell your mom, <laughs> tell everybody. That Sinclair is going first. Hit us with it. So examples of like KPIs that I track. I actually track my morning routine as a KPI. Hmm. Why do I track that? Because I know that I feel better. I generally am more productive. I'm generally in a better mood when I do my morning routine. Mm -hmm. So like when I, when I picture my future you, she's someone who has got, is productive. She's got all her stuff she wants to get done. She feels good. She is not bothered by, you know, things that are happening in the world. Um, she is, she's patient. She is, um, she's healthy. She's physically fit. She is married um, to Devon. She is married. She has a great relationship with her husband. Right. Um, but yeah, so those are things like when I think about my future you. Um, and so when I then reverse engineer and say, well, how can I make that happen? Right. I know from personal experience that on days, again, when I do my morning routine, I just know that those are generally like if I had every day like that, I know I would reach that goal. Mm -hmm. So that's why I made my morning routine a KPI of mine. Um, so I actually, I'm, I'm going to preface this, I'm an analytical. I am, I've taken the DISC assessment. I am a high C, which is, it, some people say cautious or conscientious, um, but that just means that I, I try to, I like to have a methodology. I like to have a tangible way to do things. So I actually created a Google form for myself. I get a reminder this once is a month. to me, y'all. Yes. I, well, I asked you the other day, I was like, well, if I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to create, right. I'm, I am my first patient or I don't say patient, my first client, right. I'm a health mm -hmm. coach. I am my first client. So I'm trying to develop systems that work for me so I can then pass those along to other people. I did ask you one day, I was like, all right, so I'm doing some experimental stuff. Oh, yeah, you want to be no. included? You said no. So I, I like, said no with quickness. <laughs> I'm good. Do you think? So that's what I was talking about. <laughs> so I actually created a Google form for myself. And, and it covers basically, it's a very holistic form that covers like, how do you generally feel? It covers like, you know, and it, it's not quite as granular as I want it to be. I'm working on making it, but I'm kind of just starting more uh, high level. Mm -hmm. um, so, but it does actually ask like, a, for a rough percentage of how, how many days you completed your morning routine. Um, and so on a weekly basis, I try to track how many days I did my morning routine. There's just some days where it's like, shoot, you know, I, I press the snooze button. Now I don't have time to do my full morning routine that I, that I didn't do the full morning routine. Right. So I wouldn't say that that was a, a thumbs up day. That would be a thumbs down day. Um, but I actually have a calendar reminder every month that pops up that says, go take your, I call it a pulse check, go take your pulse check, right? You check your pulse to make sure it's see you still alive, still alive. So, right <laughs> it's just it's supposed to be like a check-in maybe i'll change the name um but <laughs> you make me i'm gonna change the name um but basically i have it's a google form i fill it out once a month and if you if you know what i'm thinking about google forms you track the data so i can go back every month and see the trends i can see how am i doing um and my progress so yeah, and you know, I, I have like weight goals and things like that. So I even included that in the, in the form. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the way that I hold myself accountable to actually do it every month. So otherwise you'll do it when you feel like it and Lord knows when that'll be. Um, so yeah, I like to try to make it as systematic as possible. So you can set up reminders in your phone to remind you to review your KPIs or whatever it's gonna be. But that's an example of what I do. Nice, and you're for your business and in shorts because I have a meeting in four minutes. Sorry. Um, for my business, basically the, the exactly what I talked about. So I have a Google form um, that says, these are the goals. These are the three goals we are trying to meet. And then below that, it's got, these are the things every single week that we need to be doing to reach this goal. And what are they? What do you mean? What, what are those measurements? Um, oh, for, so for potluck, right? We have the, the um, home cooked app where people can go get home cooked food. Chefs on the app is a KPI um 
followers on social media. We're still in our infant stages, so we're trying to grow the community. Followers on social media is a KPI. Um, what's another one? Chefs, mm -hmm. followers. Mm -hmm. Revenue. It's a new one that you, you just did the budget. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is, that is a newer one. Um, yeah, I can't think of the third one, so just go ahead. And... <laughs> oh, good. All right. So I've been tracking certain measurements since august 8th 2017. so this and i'm not going to go through all of the uh the stages of everything but just know i've been taking kind of kpis and that wasn't why i started this like maybe it was because this is when i first started working for mm -hmm. that job so maybe i did start doing this three years ago without knowing it downloads yes. downloads thank you queen <laughs> um so these are the kpis that i've been tracking one salary so in 2017 my salary was forty three thousand dollars and i only had one source of income we ball it now <laughs> oh education i had you know sociology from uc davis job i was working at uc riverside in admissions counseling level two and back then i was also tracking staff so i had 11 student staff diet pescatarian still that uh married marriage status engaged um real estate none so i had no real estate owned at that time business we just had the th4 business at that time trail forever shout out um on youtube we only had five videos we only had three subscribers and no income and then car was uh leasing my 2017 prius all right so those are things that i've been measuring since 2017 uh in 2020, so far, the latest one that I have is April 16th, 2020, salary up. I was about to say, you're going to give all the deets? <laughs> no, but just know it's up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, education, still the same, but I've been denied three times from MBA programs. I have no shame in saying my failures because y'all y'all know where I'm headed. And all right. these MBA programs would be like, he applied? Right. We, we could have had it. So yeah, I'm not saying with that. Uh, job working at UCLA, pescatarian diet, marriage status, married. Hey, that's up in there. Uh, real estate. Now we are condo owners and thinking about getting an investment property. So boom, that's in here. Business, True Health Forever with 25 blogs, 80 videos, and now we're at 330 subscribers. Hey. All right, so you're able to kind of see the growth. That's why, again, I love doing this. Um, and then we have a complete secondary or three businesses at this point, Black Play Black Wall Street. And then we also have Potluck. So again, three years, you see kind of the growth in business and personal stuff. Um, and then card, I now own my Prius. And then life, I have coronavirus lockdown. So I'm supposed to do this every three months. So I'm going to do this again. Well, you said that I have coronavirus Oh, no, I do not have coronavirus, <laughs> but I have written down coronavirus lockdown. Just I'm healthy, y'all. Thank you for checking on me. Um, but long story short, start tracking some things. And for me, I love going back to that and seeing the progress whenever I'm like, man, we don't have that many subscribers. Or, oh, man, our income is so low. Like being able to go back and be like, Devon, you know, you had three subscribers back, back right. then, right? And y'all are still producing. Devon, you know, you should make $40,000 per year which and I know is a lot to some folks, but for our vision, we wanted to make sure that revenue gets up there. And we're also in California, just keep that up. And we're also in Cali, right? Where you need <laughs> $60,000 to really even do anything. Um, so yeah, keep, keep track of your KPIs. Some KPIs for Play Black Wall Street are one, next year we do want to have $100,000 in revenue. We're gonna be very creative in how we do that. But next year under Play Black Wall Street, we do wanna have $100,000 in revenue. Y'all can help us get there. Um, we are doing like a lot of good stuff to get us there. We also want to donate fifty thousand dollars. All right, so all, all right there, we have donations of fifty thousand dollars, and that's in scholarships, that's in free board games given out, that's in funds to the Greenwood Cultural Center. So yes, we do want to make money, but we're also trying to like how can we also give back to our community through Playback Wall Street? Uh, we want to sell a thousand units of the second edition, we wanna sell, I have them right there, I'm on in case you're saying, what's he looking at? Uh, sell 500 units of a different surprise edition that's coming out later on. Uh, we want to be able to have children books 
So again, like write down what your KPIs are, put them somewhere that you can be reminded of every day. If it's a Google calendar, a Google form, something on the wall and get it done, manifest. All right, I got a meeting. So uh, Queen, I'm sorry I have to end this one a little bit early. You, you can still chat with the folks if you want to. I think we, we covered, covered most, of it. most of it. Okay, cool. Well, thank you. Bless your hearts. We hope you are healthy. But thank you for tuning in for another episode of the True Health Forever podcast, where we try to live our best life through the lens of holistic health. I'm your host, Devon Travell, creator of Black Wall Street, the board game. And I'm Sinclair, the health nerd. Make sure y'all stay healthy. Make sure y'all stay mentally wealthy. And of course, make sure y'all stay true. true.